you know. Oops. It's a beautiful day in La La Land, and unfortunately, well, I'm gonna bright side this. I was gonna say, unfortunately, the open mic, the world famous Hollywood improv, my beloved improv. was canceled tonight. It's just now occurring to me that I might have been deliberately left off the email distribution list about the cancellation, but you know. <laughs> it's all good because who did I run into? Not only the world famous Josh Edelman, but the world famous Abby Schachner, who I have to remember to text later. So I got a wonderful one-on-one -on -one with the both of them, but especially with Abby. And we had a chance to talk about overcoming trauma. Oh. I took a few puffs of an American spirit cigarette, you know, just for old times sake, but I'm feeling good, people. And all I have in my system is a 10 milligram sativa edible and here's the thing as I keep saying on these tapes right let me just switch I had an oh look at that light I had an unbelievable time my bus trip getting here. And I also want to give a shout out to my friend Alok. Thank you. They were one of the people who moved from New York to LA while I was finishing up my PhD in New York City and working through my own trauma, which I really have only let go in the last couple of weeks, you know. Um, They said in a reel the other day, let me not digress, even though I am neurodivergent like we all are, especially these days. They said in a reel, it was part of a setup to a joke, but nevertheless, there was truth there, which is that they were doing their sun salutations in the morning. And today I woke up with so much anxiety that I stayed in bed from 9.07 when I woke up naturally to about 107 when I finally rousted myself from my bed and jumped up and it was a beautiful day and it was 78 degrees and I said you're gonna make it after all kid you're gonna make it after all and then I said you know what after I take an enormous shit I am going to do some yoga because even though I felt too, I couldn't think, right? That's how for people who have experienced abnormal anxiety, I couldn't even think. I didn't know what to do. And I finally thought, you know what? Just fucking do it. Get on the ground, motherfucker, and do some yoga. And I did it and I felt better. The pain in my fucking left gluteus hip area worked it also shout out to fucking gary hunt yo jesus christ their birthday is today his birthday is today we know each other from fucking dc yo and i did the yoga and i felt better you know and then i was able to eat because my nerves had quieted and i had some coffee and then I was able to take a shower, right? But I was still so nervous that I wasn't gonna get to the improv on time that I jumped out of the shower without toweling off my hair. So my hair was dripping. And I was like, whatever, maybe it'll look better this way after I put all the fucking leave-in conditioner in. I put a leave-in conditioner in, put my hair back, let it do its thing for a minute. 
uh, not from all the women in my life, starting with my mama. Pat Kennedy, say her name. And yet I did the rest of my shit. Brushed my teeth, flossed, put my sunscreen moisturizer on, and then I took a spare towel and toweled off my hair. And it was so easy to comb that way, and then I just let it sit like this and put on my outfit, you know? Same thing I always wear. It's all H&M except for the boots, which are Celine. When I first met Arthur, in fact, when I stayed with him at his old place on Jackson Street for a couple of months, one of his roommates worked for Celine, which the last I checked is headed by one in the one and only the genuine article, Eddie Slimon, one of my all-time heroes. Thank you also, Mark Jacobs, baby. These are my notes from underground. This bag is polystyrene. I bought it um, from Farfetch when Arthur started working there. And of course, the socks, my purple socks are supreme. Times Haynes from The Real Real. Thank you, The Real Real. Thank you to Arthur, my stylist, among other things, for putting me on to athletic socks. They work so much better in boots than any other type of socks. It takes lovers and friends to tell you this shit, people. Lifelong learning, I always say. That's the key to life. And the underwear is in Timosimi, of course, the same brand that JLo endorses. And leave JLo alone, people. What is up in the world that everybody's attacking JLo, right? Don't answer that. Life's too short for rhetorical questions to be answered. Here's what's up. People take out their shit left and right in the brave new digital world, right? They take out their shit on people left and right. Okay, I got the light. Anyway, I gotta get out of here. I just realized I can make it to the Jeffrey Goodman Special Care Clinic and pick up my Discovy so that I can maintain my HIV negativity. And that's where I'm gonna end this. My friends, when I was in General Hospital one year ago on April 8th and 9th, Easter, Ramadan, and Passover all together at that moment, an Abrahamic triumvirate, Yes, I was having a scrotal. Infection treated, but it was a skin infection. People had nothing to do with my family jewels except for its location. They told me after drawing my blood, which is what happens when you go see doctors, right? That I was fucking HIV positive. And I gotta tell you, I have never, ever, ever been more shocked in my life because I have done everything to prevent that infection. Not because it's a chronic illness, which it is, and so many people in this fallen world have chronic illnesses that are otherwise preventative. When you think about public health and the way structures of care should be set up, not the way they currently are set up, not for care at all, but for harm. But because this stigma that was attached to having HIV AIDS because I grew up 
in the 80s, I saw the hate and the violence and I thought as a gay guy, so I was being told before I even had a fucking chance to identify for myself, right? What was I picking up on the broadcasts, right? The media, right? I was picking up that I was doomed because I was gay. And before I ever had the ability to comprehend any of this, the trauma had already set in, right? So that's the original trauma. And that's why the exposure therapy that I received, I don't know whether they told me deliberately that I was HIV positive or not, but there was no way I was HIV positive because nobody that I have sex with has HIV present in their bodies because of the medications that they take. And I was taking my own medication, as I said, to prevent an HIV infection. So that's a double blind, my friend. It's basically impenetrable, which is to say it was basically impossible for me. to have contracted HIV. And it turned out I did him, which was confirmed two days later when one of the doctors who had treated me, in fact, she was to be my new HIV doctor, so she said. She called me to confirm that the confirmation testing turned up negative, which is to say they, at General Hospital, put me on antiretroviral and antiretrovirals for an HIV infection that I did not have that I said was impossible for me to have and yet they put me on antiretrovirals anyway without even waiting for the confirmation testing and I couldn't say anything because as I said, I was there with an open wound in two parts of my body and an internal wound in my scrotum. So I was in an extremely vulnerable state to disagree with the authority of the medical doctors who were attending to me. And all I could think was, I'm actually a philosophical doctor. But a philosophical doctor who learned in the course of his study of intellectual thought across time and space. That it's not my job to bring more harm into the world. And so even though I let that doctor have it, I was acting to release. all the agitation that that misdiagnosis and the way they treated me as high risk for HIV simply because I'm a gay guy. You know? <laughs> but could I have sued? Sure I could have sued, right? Because I wanted to fucking kill myself. I kept thinking, I'm going to take on yet another stigmatized identity in addition to being gay in addition to being perceived as fucking effeminate, right? In addition to fucking being crucified there, I said it for being a fucking white man. Who the fuck cares? It's your deeds that matter, your actions that matter. And you know what, Arthur's HIV positive. And so it allowed me yet another chance to understand where he was coming from in his life and it's just a fucking matter of chance as I always like to say that he contracted HIV when he was younger and I didn't 
contract HIV when I was younger. And now I'm not even having sex, right? Because I got all that shit out of my system, right? My hole was filled so many times that I just realized I didn't need it to be whole anymore. W-H-O-L-E. I thought, you know what? Let's give this H-O-L-E a rest. And that's my improvised monologue for today, my friends. I'm working towards an evening-length Broadway production. If you don't speak it into existence, it won't happen. And that's not me saying that. That's one of the black fellows I heard on the bus just now coaching somebody that he loves in his life. And I also felt loved in that moment because I thought, yeah, we've got each other. Right? That's called harm reduction. That's called caring for each other. That's called just us. Right? The only way justice is ever achieved is through just us, my friends. I might have just messed that bus, but it's okay. There's more than one way to skin a cat and don't I know I feel more and more like a cat every single day with this hair. Thank you, Stacy Chabarez. You cut my hair so well, I don't even have to see you, girl. But I feel you, people. And every time I look at myself in the mirror, which is this fucking camera, I feel her love, too. I feel everybody's love. You know why? Because Madonna made me. Fortunately, Madonna also entered my consciousness in the 80s. And if I didn't have her beauty and art in my head, I probably wouldn't still be here. And that goes for me and Arthur both. Say her name, say Beyonce's name, say Rihanna's name, say Tracy Chapman's name, say Rihanna's name, say Kurt Cobain's name, say Bob Marley's name, say Lauryn Hill's name, and listen to YG Marley, yo, that's what's up. Teach them something before they lose their soul. Well, that's what fucking Arthur taught me. He fucking grabbed me by the neck and said, I'm not letting you go. I see you. And even if we're separating right now, it's for the greater good. And he didn't have to articulate all this to me. It's called pillow talk, people. AKA telepathy. 1818, I'm golden as always. Thank you, Jill Scott. Thank you, Kevin Hart. Thank you, Temple University. Thank you, Mark Lamont Hill. I mean, the list just keeps going on. Right? Thank you, Nilofer. Last name redacted because of the political situation, but she's the one whose model I followed when it came to public acknowledgements. Anyway, I have a whole theory around reenactment versus creation that none other than Uta Hagen has helped me devise. Respect for acting, my friends. You don't want to fuck with actors. I gotta go get my pills and I can also hit the loo there, I think. Do I really have to go? No. But you never know. I was taught to go anyway so that you're what? Prepared. Be prepared, people. I fucking quit the goddamn Boy Scouts too. I was like, Cub Scouts, enough. And I had already won the Pinewood Derby. I was like, who needs this bullshit anymore? I wanna go back 
and work on my poetry. And thank you, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Shakira, Ariana Grande, Vampire Weekend, Taylor Swift coming up. So much to look forward to, my friends. If you ever need me, I'm just a video away, an email away. Don't call me that, I never pick up. Peace in the Middle East, we're gonna get there sooner or later. I've been Sean MP, AKA SMK OG33, AKA William James 78, AKA the list goes on. As Madonna says, the more you give, the more it comes back to you. It's a circle, my friend, around. Now I really am gonna hang it up, chop around.